I'm good at rubber belly. So I watched Rings for some reason, the psychological horror movie that negative 13 people asked for. After the masterpiece that was Ring 2, the demand for a new Ring movie was through the roof. And by through the roof, I mean non-existent. Who looked at this and said, you know, at least it needs a sequel. We'll do a little sequel here. Man, those big game hunter deer don't even want to be in this movie. So Rings was directed by F. Javier Gutierrez. I'm totally pretending like I know how to pronounce his name. You know, I believe it was the Greek philosopher Testicles that said the most important thing in life is correct name pronunciation. So what's this movie about? It's set 13 years after the first Ring movie, I, I think. And by first, I mean the American one. And it tells the story of a bunch of people haunted by a... <laughs> by a cursed YouTube video. No, oh, it's so stupid. I made a movie was like a video. It calls you on the phone. And it's like... George said it's a good idea. It's so stupid. I mean, I, I, I like the first movie. I, I've seen it many times. I, I thought it was a genuinely fun and spooky movie. But the premise is just... It's always been pretty dumb. I mean, there's a... So there's, there's a VHS tape that kills people after talking on the phone with them. It's about the movie that calls you on the phone. Oh, you're seven days. Seven days. What what if someone just doesn't answer it? Also, where the heck is Samara calling from exactly? Yeah, I know there's a girl and the well and lots of cool backstory, but So the acting in uh, Rings immediately strikes me as terrible. I've seen better acting in life alert commercials. I've fallen down, I can't get up, and George had to, had to call George for the get a life alert. These people got their roles just because they were young and looked really, really good. And I, I, I don't doubt that some of these people are good actors, but the writing and directing certainly isn't on their side here. Um, the movie just screams, I don't care. The movie doesn't have to be good, it's uh, gonna make a lot of money regardless. And the movie made a lot of money when we went, we went to Costa Rica and I stayed in a very ornate hotel. And if George fell into the swimming pool, we had to call the ambulance. I mean, the movie to me just screams, you know, I don't care. The movie's gonna sell well, people are gonna see it, it's gonna make a lot of money. I mean, they're not selling a movie here, they're selling a brand. People like the first movie, so they're gonna see this one, even if it's terrible, and it is. You know, enough reboots, enough sequels, take a risk and give us something new and original, but I digress. So right when the movie starts, this random guy, this total just creepo on a plane, starts starts this conversation with the stranger next to him, like you do. And he said, Have you heard of... <laughs> Have you heard of the video that kills you and you watch it? And then he gets up and runs away. It was, it was so weird. The people in this movie are so erratic and strange. Which does not contrast well with the serious tone they're trying to go for. You know, it's not unheard of for a good movie to have bad acting. I mean, look at Star Wars. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. Those movies had the hokiest dialogue and acting ever. And yet they were still great. With that being said, the scares are there. Yeah, there's a lot of jump scares, because everybody loves those. But, uh, Samara, the girl in the tape, is as creepy as ever. They did a great job of the effects and overall aesthetics. I have no fear, the tape itself, the video, is 100% Creepsburg. And there's even some extra footage this time around. However, I will say that this is one of those movies where I actually kind of want the bad guy to win. I don't care about Holt or Julia. They're both the same character. Samara, on the other hand, is a genuinely interesting character, and it's no different here. The whole mythology of this series is pretty fascinating to me. The problem with Rings, though, is that it doesn't really have a reason to exist. <laughs> I mean, nobody watched the first two movies, especially the second one, and thought, you know what, this, this story has to continue. No, they didn't make this movie because they had new ideas and wanted to explore the mythos of the series. They made this because it's gonna make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can't blame them. Also dislike the religious symbolism here. I thought it was a bit heavy-handed, but... 
Won't go into that much. You know, some mysteries are best left unsolved. I don't want to know the Joker's real name. I don't want to know what's under Double D's hat. I mean, I do, but when you put that information out there, it's out there forever and you can't... It, just, it takes away the mystery, you know? I think it's best to drop subtle hints so people can come up with their own theories. Look at the man with no name from the Dollars Trilogy. They make hints as to what his real name might be, but we'll never know for sure, and that's fine. It's fun to come up with theories. But in Rings, they just tell you everything. They, they really spoil the mystery. Overall, Rings is very disappointing to me. I actually went into this wanting it to be you know, as good or better than the original. And I was dopey enough to hope. It's not as bad as some people say it is. However, I do think it's well below average. I will say the ending is pretty tense, if a little on the stupid side. And so my final rating for Rings is a 4. It's horse malarkey. I, I really didn't want to give it that rating, but when you take away Samara, you have nothing. Anyways, those are my silly opinions. You're free to disagree. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and as always, stay squirrely.